I want to say welcome to you to the ongoing virtual worship services of Restoration Bible Church. Today we are just honored and, and blessed to have you with us at this time. Our church is Restoration Bible Church here in this great city of Seattle, Washington. To the Restoration Bible Church family, we want to say thank you for your continued faithfulness and staying the course even at a time such as this. We send our love and our care to each and every one of you as well as your families. So let's get into the Word of God today. Let's get into the Word of God. This is somewhat of a Thanksgiving message, but I want you to get a hold of this a little bit. This is a little bit different, but I want you to get a hold of this a little bit. It's going to get out there a little bit deep, but I want you to get a hold of this. Turn with me to the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke, the seventh chapter, verse 41 through 42. Now, I would like to entitle this message, I O U. I O U. This story starts in Luke 7, 36, about Jesus going to have dinner at the home of a Pharisee named Simon. A woman comes in crying before Jesus with her tears flowing onto the feet of Jesus and she starts wiping clean and drying the feet of Jesus with her hair. Then she kissed his feet and she poured costly perfume on his feet. Simon the Pharisee, the dinner host, was thinking if Jesus Jesus was a prophet and he was all he was supposed to be, he would know this woman, this woman is a sinner. Knowing what he is thinking, Jesus asked Simon the Pharisee a question in the form of this parable in Luke 7, 41 through 42. He says, there was a certain creditor who had two debtors, one owed 500 denarii and the other 50. And when they had nothing with which to repay, he forgave them both. Jesus then says, tell me, therefore, which of them will love him more? Well, in Luke 7, 43, we read Simon, the Pharisee, he knew the correct answer, but he could not apply it to himself. Like some of us, his thinking was, how could I be in debt? I always repay my IOUs. This may be surprising to some. No matter how hard we try to be debt free, we are all in debt to God. Think about that. We are all in debt to God. Can we ever repay God? If so, how should we repay him? How should we be showing him our gratitude? How should we be showing God our appreciation and thanks? I know this parable is a little unusual for a Thanksgiving Day message, but stay with me. But it has been put on my heart to make us all think a little more than just how we normally think on Thanksgiving. We could put out countless amounts of reasons why we should be giving thanks on Thanksgiving Day. Thanks for turkey, dressing, potato salad, grandma's gravy, sister May May's sweet potato pie auntie nene's uh, coconut cake and uh, a bottle of cold pepsi in the refrigerator we we got reason but when we look back over all god has done for us from the simplicity of that we are still alive to the complex truth we have not gone crazy while we're still here and he has provided all our needs according to his riches and glory but often we forget that he also has forgiven us and taken care of our future through Jesus Christ. And that is a debt we cannot repay. So how should we be showing our thanks? I plan to get a little deep today, as I said earlier. I plan to get into this a little bit deeper. But first, let's look at this grateful and thankful woman here we realized she was in a serious debt to God with no way to repay him. She was in serious debt. She was the one who owed the 500 denarii. But she is coming before Jesus, the earthly presence of God, the Son of God. She's coming before him. And here it says she has tears. She has these tears. See, these tears showed her emotional repentance. Her emotions flowed, flowed, and flowed. But these emotional tears were not wasted. 
These tears were an outwardly sign of an inwardly change in her heart. She was determined to live a life better than she had before and take sin out of her life as much as she possibly could. I need to ask you a question. Have you ever cried in repentance before God? Cried in real repentance before God, the real tears of thanks. I'm not talking about them little ones, but the real tears of thanks. You see, it says also she wiped his feet dry with her hair. This woman is humbly submitting herself in appreciation. She is showing service to God. See, the custom at that time was when guests came to dinner, their feet were washed from the dusty roads they had traveled. The host of this church did not offer this courtesy, this service to Jesus. This service to Jesus shows her humbled appreciation for him. And she was not ashamed. See, I need to say this to somebody. Don't be ashamed to humble yourself before God. Don't be ashamed to humble yourself before Jesus. But the, the scripture goes on and says she kissed his feet. She showed her love for Jesus. Got another question for you. How should we show Jesus we love him? She knows in her heart by faith who he is, who Jesus is. Need to ask you just another question. Do you know him? My dear friend, uh, associate minister, Reverend uh, David Boyd always asked this question. Do you know him? When he's evangelizing in front of somebody, he says, do you know him? Then he says, what is his name? What is his name? The woman kissing Jesus' feet is a sign of love and thankful. Somebody say thankful, thankful submission. Then she poured fragrant oil on his feet. So you see, she's anointing him with oil. This alabaster oil was very, very expensive. She is lifting Jesus up in front of everyone that is there. And this is what we should be doing. By her actions, she's giving him thanks and making payments on her IOU to him. For the debt forgiven, she could not repay. You see, overflowing love is the natural response to forgiveness and the appropriate response in faith. But only those who realize the depth of their sin can appreciate the complete forgiveness God offers them. Jesus has rescued uh, us from eternal death, whether we, ex you know, we're, we're, whether we are extremely wicked or just plainly conventionally, just just conventionally good, as the world would say. But the question is: Do we oppose? Do we appreciate the wideness of God's mercy? Are we grateful for his forgiveness? Does your gratefulness say to God, I owe you? In Luke 7, 15, this woman's act of humility and love shows that she has been forgiven. Luke 7, 50. Jesus did not overlook her sins. He did, in fact, know this woman was a sinner. And he knew that her sins were many. There are many speculations and thoughts and, and reasoning why the Bible uses the term sinner here to describe her. But the fact is, she was no worse than all of us. And she was forgiven. The fact that her sins were forgiven caused her to overflow with love, gratitude, submission, and thanksgiving for Jesus. The woman's love for her thanks did not cause her forgiveness. These were not the cause of her forgiveness. Because you see, no one can earn God's full forgiveness. Her faith in Jesus, despite her sins, saved her. Well, I need to ask you this question. Do you have that kind of faith? By contrast, self-righteous people like Simon the Pharisee here, this story feels that their sins are so little compared to others, there's no need to get thanks or appreciation. So many people have no idea they should be thankful, and even less so, they would not understand they have an IOU outstanding to anyone. It becomes very easy to forget how much has been forgiven us. 
the parable Jesus uses makes us consider the amount of debt we once were in. You see, we all had a sin debt extensive to pay. Mine might have been the 500 denarii and, and, and quite large, and yours may have only been the 50 denarii and small. But before Christ, we were all in debt, and we had a debt we could not repay. If my sin debt has been paid in full by the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. How, Pastor George, how, Pastor George, how, Pastor George, how can you name a message I owe you? Well, that's easy for me. Once we realize we are no longer in debt to sin, we become responsible to the person who paid that sin. We have a responsibility to him. I want you to look at, think about Matthew 11, I think it is, verse 28 through 30. Jesus says, Come to me, all you are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Well, if this is you and you've done this, you've come to Jesus, we have a responsibility to Jesus for the debt burden he has paid for us. This IOU can only be paid through showing our thanks for all he has done. You see, I don't know about you, but I don't mind having a Jesus holding my IOU. I don't mind that. I don't mind him having a hold of my IOU. And I try to make payments on that IOU daily. And I don't ever want to become delinquent. See, I'm trying to, to, sh 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 to close and talk about the appreciation and gratitude and thanks that we owe. That we owe. How do I pay on my IOU to God? First, I, the instrument, become an instrument for God. I, become an instrument for God. Let God use you. Say, not my will, but thy will be done. Galatians 2, 20 and 21 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It, I no longer I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I live, in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Die to ourselves and become instruments for Christ. I, instruments, change the music, the sound coming out of us. You know, I've heard bad musicians play a violin, and then I've heard a good musician play a violin. Both are playing the same instrument. Sometimes the sound is so bad, but often the sound can be very, very good. This woman in this story had a bad sound. She had a bad reputation. And when Jesus came to down town, she, she changed her music. She changed her sound. She changed her song. And she was forgiven. And if you follow her through the scriptures, she became a beautiful instrument for Christ, making payments on her IOU regularly. As an instrument for Christ, what kind of music are you making? I, instrument. What about O? I use the word obedient. This here means carrying out the word and will of another person, especially the will of God. You see, we are making payment on our IOUs when we are being obedient. Oh, I owe you. I owe being obedient. In the Old Testament covenant be between God and man, obedience to God has the basis for receiving God's blessings and his favor. Samuel emphasizes in 1 Samuel 15, 23, I think it's 15, 22, that God's pleasures not in the sacrifice, but in obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Even the promise of the new covenant emphasized through the, through it, by obedience to God, we do that by our giving thanks. The perfect obedience of Christ brought to us grace, righteousness, and life. You see, I want to honor God. We should want to honor Christ by being obedient to him and his word. This woman in this story heard the word of God and the word Jesus spoke and obeyed them. I, instrument, O, obedient, and then you, meaning uninhibited. 
This you points to you. Don't you let anything stop you from giving God praise. We give thanks to God for what he did, what he does, and what he is doing for us. Uninhibited thanksgiving should spring from a grateful heart. And it is required of all believers, regardless of their initial attitude. We should be grateful to God for all things. Ephesians 5, 20 says, give thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, we owe God thanks. This woman was not invited to dinner, but that didn't stop her. Yes, yeah, she was. She had some issues. She was messed up, but that didn't stop her. She was a sinner, but that did not stop her. She was not going to let anything or anyone let her get in the way to showing her thanks. This is how we should be. I have many, many people in my life that I can just look and, and know that their lives, their lives are like uh, Reverend Pamela Tillman and Reverend uh, Jamila Boyd. Their lives show that they're giving thanks and their thanks is uninhibited, uninhibited. As I close, the woman in this story was not going to let anyone or anything stop her from showing her thanks to God. As an instrument, I for God and being obedient, O oh, and uninhibited, you, our highest praise and thanks is because of God's work of salvation and sanctification. Do you have an eye you God is holding? Well, I need to say this to somebody. We should be making payments on it daily. The truth is that Jesus Christ gave his life for you and, and for me. And if Jesus Christ has in fact paid our sin debt in full, we are in debt to him. We are in debt to him. We have an unpaid IOU to God. So we should always be making payments on it by loving of the people, by being submissive to God, doing his will, being an instrument for God, obeying his word, and then being uninhibited by showing our praise for all he has done for us. God bless you, God keep you. I pray that helps somebody on this Thanksgiving.